Hello, everyone. Welcome to the program. This is Politics Today, live on Channels Television. I'm sure Joaquin Malay in Abuja. It is from the courtroom that we begin proceedings tonight on the program. And let's tell you that a sentence senator has been sentenced to prison. Senator Peter Nwaboshi of Delta State has been sentenced to seven years in prison for financial crimes. Lagos, the Lagos Division of the Court of Appeal today convicted and sentenced Senator Nwaboshi, a senator representing Delta North, Territory District of the National Assembly, to seven years imprisonment along with his two companies, Golden Touch Construction Project Limited and Swimming Electrical Limited. This was contained in a statement from the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, which prosecuted the case. In addition, the Court of Appeal ordered that the companies who were the second and third respondents in appeal be wound up in line with Section 22 of the Money Laundering Prohibition Act 2011 as amended and their properties forfeited to the federal government. Our eyes are on the quality of leadership that Nigeria deserves, especially the yearnings of the average Nigerians. They want some of their problems to be resolved. And the basic question is, what solutions do these people who want to lead Nigeria have for the nation? It's very critical for us to get critical about this matter and how they're hoping to resolve these, uh, these issues as they get onto the campaign platforms. So one of the presidential candidates will be joining me live in the studio. But before we get to do that, let's check out some of your political roundup stars. Justice Iyang Ekwo of the Federal High Court Abuja has ordered the National Identity Management Commission, Nigerian Immigration Service and others to release the certified true copy of an alleged minor's biodata to former Deputy Senate President Ike Kurimadu and his wife Beatrice. Justice Iyang Ekwo gave the ruling following an originating summon moved by Kurimadu's counsel Adegbo Iga Awomolo. In a short ruling, Justice Ekwo granted the prayers of the lawmaker having been satisfied that the defendants had been served. Court has made that order that they should uh, give us certified to copy of this process. The National Organizing Secretary of the Ruling All Progressives Congress, Suleiman Arugungu, says the party will soon reveal its original running mates to Nigerians ahead of the deadline given by the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, for substitution of names. Speaking exclusively to channels television at the National Secretariat of the party, Mr. Arugungu says there is no rift in the party, contrary to some speculations making the rounds, adding that the party is united and fully prepared for the 2023 general elections. By God, uh, will put in the name of our learning mate of Bola Ahmed Tunum. The national youth leader of the APC, Mr. Dayo Israel, says plans are on the way to meet with the ministers of labor and education over the ongoing ASU strike. Addressing journalists after a closed-door meeting of the party's national youth leader stakeholders in Abuja, Mr. Israel says some of the youths at home on strike are also members of the APC. Therefore, youth leaders of the party cannot afford to stand aside and let youths continue to stay at home. We also understand that these things are not easy. Every side have their angles and their dimension. We're going to be practical with that. The presidential candidate of the African Democratic Congress, ADC, Mr. Dumebi Kachiku, is giving Nigerians assurance that the challenges of the nation are solvable and has assured that the ADC is out to provide better and visionary leadership that would lead to shared prosperity for all Nigerians. Kachiku and top leaders of the ADC were in Sokoto to commission the party's new secretariat and equally receive hundreds of decampees from the All Progressives Congress to the ADC. At the event, over 120 members who defected from the APC were received into the ADC by the national leadership of the party. And one of the aspirants who contested the governorship primary of the People's Democratic Party in River State, Mr. Morgan Tom West, has dragged the party to court. Mr. Tom West, through his lawyer, Ibrahim Idai, filed the suit at the Federal High Court in Port Harcourt to demand that he be declared a validly elected governorship candidate of the PDP in the primary. His arguments are that Mr. Siminilai Fubara, who was declared winner of the primary, was not qualified to contest the election and that the party's guidelines were not followed in the conduct of the primary. Morgan Tom West is therefore asking the courts to order the Independence National Electoral Commission not to recognize Mr. Fubara as the governorship candidate of the People's Democratic Party in River State.
Thank you so much, everyone, for staying with us right here on the program. Nigerians are seeking answers to the many problems confronting the nation, from insecurity to economic challenges, electricity, failure, and problems in the education sector. We continue our engagement with some of the presidential candidates in the race for 2023. One of them tonight is the retired Major Hamza Al Mustafa, a former Chief Security Officer CSO to lead head of a state and military dictator, General Sonia Abacha. Major Al Mustafa clinched the Action Alliance AA presidential ticket for the 2023 general elections. Al Mustafa scored 506 votes to beat his only opponent, Chief Samson Udupiton, who polled 216 votes at the party's primaries in Abuja. Four aspirants began the contest, but two of them, Mr. Tunek Elani and Chief Osakwe Johnson, stepped down for Al Mustafa shortly before the election, which was conducted using option A for Femula. Recently, Mr. Mustafa stunned Nigerians when he said if elected president, he would relocate to Sambisa Forest as part of the measure to end terrorism in the country within six months. Let's now hear from uh, Major Al Mustafa, who is joining us live, the retired Major Al Amsa Al Mustafa, a former Chief Security Officer, two late Head of State General Sonia Abacha, and the Presidential Candidate of the AA. Thank you so much, Mr. Al Mustafa, for joining us tonight. It's my pleasure. Good Thank to see you, you so much. It's Me been too. a long time. Indeed. This is your second Thank time you. of wanting to become President. Mm -hmm. and I know that. Um, uh, your former principal, General Abacha, also wanted to, to become uh, uh, a, a civilian president because uh, remember the very popular advert at the time, who does a cap fit? And there are a lot of Nigerian youth that who went onto the street to say they're marching for Abacha. But let's come to your ambition. Uh, you've been in the villa helping your former uh, boss, but now you've been wanting to become president. This is your second attempt to be wanting to be Nigeria's president. But why? First of all, I thank you for the opportunity uh, bringing me to the fore. Uh, since the convention and uh, since I became the candidate of Action Alliance, I think this is my first television outing. So I thank you for the invitation and the opportunity. And now before I answer my own question, let me treat that of the former president. I think because the man is dead, there is no need for propaganda to continue to be upon him. This is honesty uh, approach to that. I don't think he has ever told anybody he had any intention of running. That aside, my own, I decided this time around to answer to the calls of uh, many Nigerians, elders and younger ones, uh, from north to the south, and numerous associations with whom I worked with, to accept the call and to contest. And when it came, it came barely uh, towards the, I mean, the, the end of the closing time. So we sat down and then look at all the parties and look at the party that shares common interests, common understanding and our own manifesto personal and that of the party. So we realized Action Alliance has what we require, what we require. So we joined Action Alliance and uh, here we are so far doing our underground work uh, since we, the convention came and went. We collectively are working hard from across Nigeria. Uh, we have not come to the fore deliberately, but working under the table, which to me is more scientific than the Razmatars before the official uh, kickstart time, which is the 28th of September. Interesting. Um... I mean, that's, you've, uh, I mean, you've said at some point when you came out of prison that uh, you have passion for Nigeria. Right. That if uh, you have a background, uh, somewhat could be described as uh, coming from a family uh, born with a silver spoon. Some people would describe you as such that it wasn't about money that, that took you to the military in the first place that you, you have passion for. Is it the same passion that you have that is driving you to wanting to become Nigeria's president? In fact, much more. My background speaks for itself, and I'm happy you have said so, so I need not to repeat it. I came, and then I had the opportunity of serving in numerous sensitive places since I got my commission as a soldier. And since then, I have done what uh, you cannot uh, uh, appreciate at a glance, 
for the opportunities and the services we rendered. But there are records in the military speaks for itself, for anybody to see is a public document. Now, the fashion we have for this country is much more in the sense that the challenges we saw yesterday and the deep appreciation of where Nigeria is today, it is for those who truly care. And it is that sense of care and that commitment driven by energy of patriotism that brought us to the fore to join politics. I'm not here for money. Whatsoever you think or you see directly or indirectly coming into politics at this point in time and talking about money, then definitely something is wrong with that person. Nigeria has come to a point, at least we have shown concern for the last seven years plus since I came out of my of prison, we have been undergoing researches in and outside Nigeria and our findings are extremely disturbing. So what any committed Nigerian should do right now is to understand the enormity of the problems confronting Nigeria. The new world order is changing and we are not changing. The tide is changing. We are not. The wall is running with the moon. We are not. People are flowing with the wind. We are not. So time has changed and we remain stagnant. So if you also take Nigeria as an entity and look at the threat facing Nigeria alone, then you can understand the enormity of the problems. You know, they said ignorance is power. People who continue to smile and be knocking at the, de or the door of death. Is it ignorance or knowledge that is no, power? No, ignorance is also power here. What I mean by ignorance is power. Let me exemplify it by animal kingdom. A tiny little phrase. Every morning, antelope will wake up and gaze at uh, the grass in the middle distance. But because there is the sun behind it, so the grass in the middle distance will look golden, will look dry grass. So antelope is d tired of eating... Uh, green grass, so it want another variety. So in the course of galloping to meet the dry grass, it will end up in lion's den. And lion will wake up thanking God Almighty, here comes my breakfast. If the antelope had known, out of ignorance, it wouldn't have gone for that dry, dry grass. It would have ended up thanking God with what is before it. So that's this little phrase I can give you. So sometimes ignorance is power in the negative side of it. Mm. You, you are a man some people would describe as one with nine lives. Um, uh, you are one with a lot of controversies. And we cannot have a conversation tonight without talking about those controversies. Uh, you work closely with later military dictator, Sani Abacha. Right. Let me start by asking you, do you have any regret working with him, looking back? I have no regret. Once you join the military, you should be open-minded to work anywhere. You can be posted to North Pole, you may be posted to South Pole. You can be in the worst part of the world or worst part of the country. It is experience. I have had my personal destiny, and my personal destiny took me to where I served. All I want is wherever you send me to, I will serve and you will see the distinct difference, or, and I will leave it there for younger generations to learn there from and to enhance the professionalism and to enhance the status of the service I belong to. I have done so all my career, all my life. I never converse to be posted to anywhere. They saw me, they saw what they saw in me, and posted me to all the places I went to, including the late head of state. And I gave my life, I gave sacrifices that are indelible today in the records of the military that are there for people to see. We will come to that in a bit because some people who perhaps do not like your face, because there are a lot of people who do not like your face. There are people who like your face. See, but then see, the question is, yes, see, we will get to... In life. Yeah. If the whole world like your face, then it shows they are a compromised person. But if some like you and some do not like you, then you are floating a right. Absolutely. So, it is so that's why normal. I said, yeah. It is only normal that so some, some like you, don't like your some face. don't like you. That is a natural state. Absolutely. So right? that's why we get into uh, why some people don't like you. And perhaps you may have the opportunity to clarify mm -hmm. and speak about those issues. Mm -hmm. Your, uh, I mean, one would describe, for those, for those who were very close to you or who were near power at the time, uh, could describe you as perhaps you look so much like a son to the former uh, Sonia Abacha, uh, the late Sonia Abacha, and you were very close to him. That in fact, um, I mean, he was chief of, when he was chief of Amisab, you were the ADC, isn't it? 
I wasn't his ADC. Uh, uh, you you worked with him until he become yes, yes. became uh, the head of state. No, no, no. Uh, I left at, at a certain interval. I went for courses. Yeah. Then I went on a certain major operation that has to do with the sustenance of Nigeria, and I was opportune to have been picked to be a monk. We lost lives. We lost people. God decided that some of us should be back alive, and we did. We went and exemplified what we did. We lost so many people, and we came back with documents assisting Nigeria till this very moment. All right. We'll get into some of those uh, mm. things that you've done, mm. but let's talk about um, your closeness with General mm. Sania Bacha. Some people would describe him as perhaps a single dead man that still um, enriches the nation he left behind based on the well, monies that have, for example, recently mm. about 23 million US dollar was linked to mm. Abacha loot, mm. and you are very close to him. Mm. Are you are aware about some of this loot and why some of these monies were kept outside of the country? All right. This is a sensitive question, and all I want is for you to allow me to answer you. Absolutely. Directly. Go ahead, please. First of all, if you know my background, money is totally secondary, and you may be shocked at the type of person I am. If I wanted to become a rich person, there were countries that were ready to make me a very rich person, and that would have compromised my professionalism, my commitment to be who I am and who I was when I was in service. So money is secondary. I didn't join the army because of money. I'm not in politics because of money. This country requires selfless services for Nigeria to come out of where we are. And I wish and pray that we can all appreciate written or in mental sense the difficulties ahead of this country from the findings we have. That aside, the issue of money, ask anybody, ask the military, ask those in civil, anybody will tell you uh, that money was secondary. I have nothing to do with money. But there was a time I gave an interview about General Butcher when sanctions were enforced on Nigeria. Stakeholders of this country were called, agreements were reached, money were given to their accounts. But my greatest surprise today is that the media has not asked any of such big personalities to say money was given to you on an agreement. What happened to it after he died? None of you has gone to do investigative, investigative journalism. I was in prison, so many propaganda, so much messages, including those upon whom the money was, in, was given to in trust for Nigerians. But today, trinkle of it have, have been returned. And the question I may ask, was Abacha ever in those countries where the money was taken to? Did Abacha sign any of such account? Did, did they have his thumbprint? Is there a day that he deposited the error? There are numerous questions that every simple bank, talk less of the bigger banks, should have as a data for the person that deposited the money. So my challenge is, where is one single paper to show that he has his account? I'm not sitting in for him, he's dead. But then the length of the propaganda from the policies he took Nothing more. I know he offended people by taking positive policies to sustain Nigeria. Many people are afraid to speak the truth. On my way here even, I just saw an interview by one of his ministers who were the closest to him, giving him advices. But I saw in an interview lately, disowning the same man. Remember, we will all die. We will all go back to God Almighty. We will answer. If General Bacho were to be alive, most of these statements and the propaganda you say were not to be. But because he's dead. But that's another thing. That's not what brought me here. What is of concern is Nigeria's future, Nigeria's sustainability, Nigeria's progress, and then for us to invest in getting our democracy deeply entrenched for our future to be prosperous for the younger ones. That's my major your concern now. Mm. So, I mean, in essence, you're mm. saying that there are a lot of people who are involved in the transportation or the transposition of this money outside of the country, and they are still living. I'm sure, as a journalist, you're aware that when sanctions were enforced in Nigeria, after Commonwealth, the then foreign minister came back with a debrief to uh, the elders of this country from north to south. And some of the decisions that were taken was the issue of carving a means of making sure that the sanctions should not have effect on Nigeria. So money was kept with them. I gave that as an interview in 2014 myself. And there are some other people who have also spoken. But you see, because uh, General Abacha had in the decisions, decisions he took, Tough then, but it's all for the common good of Nigerians. He became an enemy to some people. Enemies at home, enemies outside. But the question I'm asking, he's dead. So, so I mean, well, this hold on. Is, is, some of those people yeah. who initially sponsored, they did it to me for 15 years. They used it to torture me. 
to torture, I escape to be to look like a human that you cannot understand. It is the will of God that I'm here talking to you normal what I went through. But it's all false. And those who were used came to, to came to the court and testified. And most of these things that were testified that are today written in the court in the documents of the court of law, the high court, uh, high courts of Lagos, um, high court of Lagos, federal high court. Court of Appeal today, they have all written these documents for everybody to see. But the propaganda then continue. You know, they use it. One, we were being tried in a normal court of law. Second, we were being tried on the pages of newspapers. What was written in the night is echoed by television and radio in the morning to justify our persecution. And that they did for a very long time. But torture, today, if we are talking about torture, no sane society or government or any institution can accept that. But the question is, they always run away from discussing what they did to us. The question is, who initiated it? Who came up with the writing team? And the question is, what are they afraid of? Who are these people? You know them. You we have no, no, been... no, no, no. I mean, you are no, here. No, no, no. If I knew them, I probably no. would have. Uh, you mean, have been but... following. Absolutely. What... No, no, no. I'm coming. But, but you the have question been... is, who you are these people? You have been following all we were doing. See, I'm not the type of person that hold my lips. I forgive them when I came out of prison. Something extremely difficult to do, I did. Let me give you a tiny little example. Burning you with nylon after you are deprived of food for two, three days and water. Then the next thing, they will flash your bread. And before you know it, they will piece it into gutter in front of you. And you are in chains, hands, leg, and neck. Only me was that being matter to. And at the end of the day, they will lead the nylon and be dropping the blue flame on you. Soon after that, hours later, they will hang you, your head upside down, and then they will twist you. The hanging in itself is done in such a crucial manner that even if you are told to stand up and walk five meters away and then earn your freedom, that will not be possible. That is how horrific it was, besides beating, besides punishing my parents, punishing my family, punishing uh, the younger brother I had who was arrested for nine years. All this happened in Nigeria. I remember for 15 years, I'm the first son of my parents. I was only allowed to see them two times. We are not at war. As at that time, I was still a serving officer. What is the name of this head? They did it. I survived it. I was told I was going to die. I survived numerous attacks, numerous orders to waste me. All fail. It's not my strength. It's by design of God Almighty. I survived it, and I am here. So to those who did what they did. Who are these people? You know them. You oh, know. Can you tell, no, say, you know. because Nigerians, no, are, see, you, you are someone see, who is taking the see, first office of the land. See, so you might be able to come clean to Nigerians when, and say, when, these are the people who are probably their names. See, the large heart to accept punishment, to go through persecution, and that same large heart that forgives has thrown this behind us. What is my greatest concern now is what is before us in this country, rendering services to the country, synergizing with all forces from across Nigeria and outside Nigeria to team up to make the difference. That is the fundamental issue right now. This is a priority. I have forgiven them. Yesterday is gone. My personal destiny is designed by God that I'm to go through that. Remember, in any phase of life you are, there is individual destiny, and that is collective destiny. There is so just... at every point in time, mm. you meet people, you serve. The greatest thing here is, did you serve well? Mm. Did you, were you loyal? Were you committed to your country? Did you leave print that others will come and emulate there from? Or were you posted to a place and left it the way it was? Meaning, you came and wasted people's time. Go check my records and know the type of person I am. So if there are people who hated me, it's simply because some of us believe Loyalty to this country, loyalty to Nigerians is an uncompromised issue, and we came to do it. I suffered what I suffered. Look at me carefully. For the sake of the life and welfare and well-being of Nigeria and Nigerians, I'm ready to die. All right. Let's quickly, because you have a lot to touch, because mm. if, uh, you, you've not hit the nail on the head uh, on two areas, uh, but I'd like to move on. Um, when you no, talked you about the fact it. that... You no, no, bring no, it. No, no, no. no, no, no. There are two areas See? that you have not yeah. touched on, on, and which is very important. Where, where they are very important. One it, it, is whether or See, not... Hold on. Hold there are some about your woman you are very on, close on. with. Uh, you, is hold, on, hold on. It's your program. You have the initiative. 
When you ask your question, allow me land. I've allowed you. No, but I, ask I, I me said I'm question. not satisfied ah, with okay. two areas. Ask about it. Ask it. The, the issue, the one is, mm. I talked about the monies mm. that were linked I to the national budget. Hold on, hold on. And you said, hold on. The government of Abdul Salam Abu Bakr was the one we handed over to. I was the one that did the handing over. Every single tiny little thing, including the hooving of the room of the president, to show being detailed. That's how I handed it over. One, to the office of the CSO. Second, to the president, to the head of state then, that came. Third, you remember there was nobody in the office of General Dia. So all the contents that were left, that General Dia was the vice president. We handed it over to the vice president. All around me. You remember there were detainees also at that time. I had to protect and so in the course of doing all this, it took me almost two months plus to get all things done and handed over. And I did. And I tell you this. That's why I always hid my chest. The government of Abdul Salam Abu Bakr, the government of President of Asanjo, did not only investigate me at home. They now consulted foreign companies. They came to meet me in prison. And some of them I know are security agents from some bigger, bigger financial uh, uh, crime detection teams took my fingerprints, my eyes, went around the whole world, including Nigeria. They found the accounts that they were paying me salary in and nothing else. I'm transparent. End up, no, I challenge the wall. I challenge the governments. They establish panels, and I ask the panel, if you have ever entrusted me with an assignment that I took one naira, one kobo out of it, I'm ready to accept being guilt as someone stolen the entire resources of Nigeria. Till this moment, because there is none. I'm right. not that type of person. Hold on. I'm not that type of person. If you're accusing General Bacho of money, that's another thing. And I told you, I gave you an answer. It's because he's dead to answer for himself. But what I know is there was not a single naira that is government's own that I took or entrusted in my care. Have I answered you? Not quite, but we need to move. No, 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 not, not quite. quite. No. The reason is, to, to the reason to... why I'm saying that your closeness, the reason why I'm asking the question is because of your closeness. Mm -hmm. And I'm saying this money linked to him, you said, is because he's dead and some of this money, some people are involved. I served him. Hold on, hold on. I served him. Every officer, every soldier, take oath of office, oath of commission. Listen carefully. Oath of allegiance. I brought this issue when Oporta panel was established in the year 2000 and 2001, and I talked about loyalty according to the dictates of the book. If it is not 100%, then there is no loyalty, and we did. You know what I did? At anywhere you put me to work, whether it was General Abacha then, whether at the time General Abdul Salam Abakar uh, came and you now said, this was the role you should play. If they had given it to me, the same service, the same loyalty. President Obasanjo came after him. If you had appointed me to work with General Obasanjo, the same service, the same commitment, or much more. We, anywhere you are taken to, the moment your loyalty becomes a bit shaky, then it's a compromised loyalty. Loyalty to the commander in chief is loyalty to the country. And today I can tell you that that aspect of loyalty is one of the fundamental issues facing Nigeria and extremely disturbing it is. All right. yeah. I have a, a quick one because we are one minute or thereabouts to break. Right. Uh, you have been, you are someone who has been charged with all sorts of offenses, so mm. from drug trafficking to plot to overthrow government <laughs> to murder and all sorts of things. Mm. Um, and you are enmeshed in all of these allegations and charges. Mm. Um, would you say that loyalty? Yes. Well, those are the things that have um, made you put you see, in that difficult see, situation. I told you of a writing team in sustaining propaganda for 15 years on me alone. And because they wanted to do away with General Bacha. General Bacha was not to survive three months. And God kept him. And we came, took oath of office, and held on to that place. So to those who wanted General Bacha removed from within Nigeria and outside Nigeria, discovered that it was impossible. It was only possible if we are dead. And as soldiers, you behave like a soldier. And I don't hide my feelings. I don't hide my professional standing. If you give me the responsibility to guard this place today, nothing happens here. If it happens, remember we are dead. Mm. And that's what I exhibited. And that is what is expected. Yeah. A soldier that comes to be a compromised person is not ambassador of his family, is not ambassador of his profession, and cannot be trusted. And it's a shame to have such people who play with loyalty. I'm not that type of person. I take off. 
I stand by the oath. All right. Um, this is not a court of law. There are a lot of issues that have been taken up in the mm. court. Uh, the death of the wife of MQ Abiola, these are issues that are brought mm. up. But if you must uh, run for office, mm. these are questions that will be asked. And that's yes. why I began with all of these issues. But we take a break. I'll ask you a few more questions mm. about some of the things that you have said mm. and how you hope to achieve them. Stay all with right. me. Mm. We take a break, everyone. And when we return, our conversation continues with Major Al Amsa Al Mustafa, AA presidential candidate. And also later on, after he's left us in the studio, we'll be talking, uh, taking on the crisis rocking the APC and all the affairs of the party. Stay with us, everyone. everyone for staying with us. Major Hamza Al-Mustafa, former CSO to late head of state General Sonia Abacha and the presidential candidate of the AA has been speaking with us on the program. Let me begin this uh, part of the program by asking you, uh, you were trained as an intelligent officer, right? Intelligence, intelligence office. officer. Yeah. yeah, that's what you're trained in. Now, um, uh, and you have said that um, there are some Nigerians who are like termites eating this nation. Yes, I Who are these so. people and what do you mean? It's uh, a topic for another day. I said so from facts given to me and known to me from the services we rendered. And you know, I've been in this service for a very long time. Who are and, these people? And out of commitment and concern and care for the welfare of this country, I made this pronouncement. And who are these people? No, you, this is not uh, the forum. Not are they yet. highly placed people? Not Met people from across Nigeria. When you are talking about the life of a country, uh, a tiny little carpenter, maybe. A tiny little technician at point A, might be. Rich man B, might be. So this is another thing entirely. What is their you plan? See, what is their plan of eating up this country? Like, this is, like you, this is uh, you know... If you, as a Nigerian, sit and look at Nigeria and look at the number of years from independence to date, and look at the records of Nigeria and seek and take a glance at development in Nigeria, you know something is wrong, correct? Correct. Yeah. Something is very wrong. Those things that are wrong are what I'm pointing at. And God willing, some of us are in, the, in this uh, business to be able to look at it and correct it legally, morally, and then democratically. So there are some people are benefiting from corrupting this nation. From, I think you from... know much more better than me. You have run numerous programs that has to do with discourses and these subjects. So what would you do about corruption? And numerous approaches concurrently that will go. And the, the structure in itself to some of us, we found it faulty. We found it to be ineffective and then too small to contain the wide front of the corrupt persons in Nigeria. You do it legally, systematically, to be accepted by international law, and you can done it with ease. Are these former military people? No, but Niger who are corrupt persons? I'm asking those highly placed people you refer if, if you, to if that you are take, this if nation you take like the termites. census of this country in knowing the corrupt persons, the record speaks for itself. So we are looking at a time when we come with civility and legally morally and democratically to have this wider front of containing it identification of corrupt persons persons doing damage to the system will face the law mm. and so, for and on behalf of the country for sanity to come in remember remember no environment that wishes to prosper especially wanting democracy to get entrenched that should allow an environment where institutions are completely dead and you think you can invest there from. So today, you have institutions that have failed. So whatever you do will have no meaning. And that's why, unless institutions are now revived, corrected, molded, rehabilitated, at the end of the day, you may waste your time doing nothing. Because nothing will be seen as an achievement. Anyone who wants to become Nigeria's president must right. have an idea of how to 
solve the insecurity problems. Right. Shiroro attack is one, mm. you know, a lot of people say one too many, mm. you know, the attacks that have taken the lives mm. of many Nigerians. And I'd like to know, I mean, you have said that you, you will relocate to some beast of forest mm. if elected president, and in fact, you will arrest the insecurity situation within six months. Absolutely. Six months. And Ab several leaders of the country have been battling to resolve this problem. How would you do that? See, I didn't make mention of six months. I didn't talk about relocating to some visa without doing my in-depth assignment. We did a lot of researches, a lot of homework into what they do. We went to dangerous places and getting data. I know what I'm doing. And I am sitting on lots of findings that we have. And we now tested some certain people even in the system. Can you work with this? This will give you solutions. At the end of the day, the capacity, ability to comprehend, to appreciate, and to launch yourself physically into doing some of these countermeasures. That is what will bring results. So many people don't have. There are people who are not ready to commit themselves to die. There are, but they are in high places. So to us, I have seen and known the thing. I am, I was, I have fought before, severally. I fought, remember, I fought before. I'm not new in the field. So if you say today, and God Almighty has vest, invest, vested power upon you, and you go back to your room and sleep with snoring, and the next day you are busy into attending some certain lower issues, but because of the lofty nature in it, you found yourself engrossed in it. In the meantime, people are dying. Then something is wrong with the person, with his psyche, with the oath of office he has taken, and between him and God, and God Almighty, because even in law, even in our constitution, first thing first, lives and safety and properties of the people in keeping the country intact. Would you say so, that so the to problem? Me, yeah. To me, every insurgency, and this is the mistake we are making in Nigeria, once you identify insurgency, be fast in containing it. See far ahead of the people. Contain it before it now becomes a monster. If while you are containing it, when it realizes it at the beginning, the whole country will abuse you for misapplication of power. Let them do it. When tomorrow comes, the same people will pressing you and honor you. And that is what happened to Nigeria. Mm. When this thing started in 1999, when Boko Haram began to rear themselves in November 1st, 1999, that was the beginning. We are talking of 21 years, seven months, or eight months now, which is to me a capital shame in the eyes of the world. Our elders, our seniors went to fight first, first World War, Second World War, what all the peacekeeping, peace enforcement records we have had. So many of our seniors have fought and died. So many are still alive, our former military leaders who went and fought and fought to sustain and to give our military name for the whole world over to recognize us. We came out doing tiny little thing at home and rubbishing all these achievements. It hurts some of us, mm. and some of us believe we can only build on excellence and maintain and bring Nigeria yeah. back to the fore within Committee of Nations. Mm. I am committed in doing that. I'm telling you, whatever you hear me say, and to particularly with the military circle, we know ourselves. If I tell you I'm relocating to the visa, I know what I'm talking about. If I relocate, I'm not just relocating to watch what I see. I have my plans. If you have your troops that are not responding to orders, I know my own. After all, an officer or officers who know what they are doing, you first of all come up with an in-depth written appreciation of your situation, an in-depth mental situation of where you are, an in-depth collaboration with international bodies, an in-depth technical support. The technical structure supporting the military today is a capital shame. I'm saying this. Nigeria, not even that alone. One of the causes of insurgency today, or promoting insurgency in Nigeria today, is the absence of technological economic support to launch our brilliant young ones. If there is nothing for them to fall back to, they fall back onto anything so long they can have money. Today, most of the kidnappings are done for people to end meet. And today, what I ask is, of all those arrested, where is the central data of the interrogation finding so that Nigerians can see and know that people were arrested in the act, people were interviewed for all these 21 years, eight months, and then Nigerians can take lessons therefrom and now make an adjustment. Right. We, we, 
We, out of commitment and concern, we took the risk you can never believe. We went to wrong places. We went to our neighboring countries to see. You need to see Nigeria from Niger. You need to see Nigeria from Chad. You need to see Nigeria from Cameroon, from the point of view of what insurgency is doing to Nigeria. You need to go to Benin and look at Nigeria from that point of view. You also need to sit down and look at the weaknesses. One word, look at the weaknesses or the mistakes we are making. The question is, is money being been pay, been, uh, is the military being funded? Is it only a military issue? How many numerous approaches are you supposed to have created to grow concurrently in containing this? So it is larger than what you can think. All right. Simply because, I'm, I said six months, and I'm talking about the commitment because of the in-depth homework I do, All and right. that's the confidence I have. We are totally out of time. Mm -hmm. But this is something, a commitment I would like from you. Mm -hmm. I'd like to invite you back on the program. But yeah. when I do, I'll give you a lot of time for us to have conversation, but you will promise that it will be no holds bad. You will give us as much information Hear my word. Hear my words. What you said is accepted. I don't like even simple questions. Look for the bitters, the, 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 the hardest question you can ever think of. Ask me. Whatever I know, you will know. All right. Wh whatever I do not know, I don't know. See, my name is Hamza al-Mustafa. I have nothing to hide. All right. I went through what you cannot imagine. But the fact that I went through it and the fact that propaganda was run on me by some selected people, it does not mean that has changed who I, who, who I am. Right. I was who I was, I am who I am, and I will never change. All right. We need to wrap up these uh, parts, right. but I must sincerely thank you. Thank you. Um, Major, retired Major Amza and Mustafa, thank you so much for coming I tonight. Appreciate it. Thank appreciate you. It. Let's read yes now, everyone. All may not be well in the several, several chapters of the APC in the state. Tonight we have the, uh, the spokesperson of the APC, Mr. Felix Moka, who joins us from our Lagos studio. Thank you so much, Mr. Moka, for your time tonight. Give us an understanding, and I guess it would be good for us to begin in emo state. Um, the Supreme Court judgment, which declared uh, Mr. Wafo, as the authentic leader, um, chairman of the party in Imo said, does that say subsist? Or what is the position of the NWC or the leadership of the APC on the situation in Imo State? Uh, thank you so much, Emo, for having me. Now, to begin with, the Supreme Court did not and never declared uh, Mr. Wafo as chairman of uh, the Imo State. Uh, chapter of the All Progressives Congress APC. Uh, that, that, I think, is just one of the, I think, um, misreading, if you will, of, of that decision of the Supreme Court. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, the Supreme Court uh, did, you know, strike down everything about the matter that led up to that appeal uh, to the Supreme Court, uh, effectively saying that the trial court had no jurisdiction to try or to entertain that matter that was brought originally uh, in the High Court. And because that court had no jurisdiction, the Supreme Court concluded that everything that was done, every order given, every process that was filed in that matter were struck out. So the court returned the matter to status quo. So it was as though there was never a case filed in that matter. So it's actually incorrect to suggest that the Supreme Court in that matter did find that uh, Mr. Wafo, led executive, uh, is actually the legitimate um, executive. So that, that's the accurate um, reading by the majority decision uh, in that case. But of course, I've, I've seen and read a lot of um, misinterpretations, if you will, or misappropriation of that decision of the Supreme Court. So I think that, uh, you know, I'm, I'm giving you now the, you know, the accurate reading, the effect of that decision by the Supreme Court, you know, in that matter in Imo State. So what is the true position of things now from the purview of the NWC? Who is the leadership, authentic leadership of the APC in Imo State? Thank you. Yes, the... Uh, the McDonald de Berry led executive committee uh, in Imo State is the legal, legitimate, and authentic structure of the party in the state. 
Now, um, you will recall that um, sometime in, uh, I think it was 20, uh, 2020, in December 2020, the then Ketika Committee of the National Ketika Committee of our party, uh, the Buni led committee, dissolved all of the executive committees of all the state chapters of our party, plus one to its authority, uh, you know, exercised on behalf of the uh, National Executive Committee of our party. By that action, all of the executive committees of APC across the country, including Imo State, were dissolved by the Ketika Committee. And in their place, Ketika Committees were set up for each of the chapters of our party, including Imo State. So meaning that as of uh, 2020, the pre-existing committee was dissolved and a Ketika committee appointed. And then, of course, we had uh, the Congress we had in 2021 across the country that produced a new executive committee in Imo State, just like, you know, we also had uh, new executive committees in all of the other states uh, in the country. So that new committee that was elected in 2021 um, is the one led by the McDonald de Berry, uh, you know, uh, committee in Imo State. So that is the authentic structure, and that committee was duly inaugurated uh, by the party. So there, there's really no controversy, and the effect of the Supreme Court, like I said, was to completely, you know, nullify every action, every decision that was taken by the High Court uh, in that matter, because that court according to the Supreme Court, lacked uh, the jurisdictional competence to have entertained the matter in the first place. So it's as though that case never was. Um, so the correct position now right. and the so, real... So we take your statement yes. tonight as the official position of the party of the National Working Committee and how further the Emo State chapter of the APC should operate, isn't it? Take it, uh, that, right? That is correct. This, what I'm, uh, you know, uh, relating to you at this moment was in fact the outcome of the NWC meeting uh, that was held yesterday uh, in which this issue of Emo State was comprehensively reviewed, discussed. Uh, the findings that I've just uh, related were made and the decision also that I've just related uh, was also made, uh, which is that the McDonald de Berry led uh, executive committee is the legitimate, the legal, and the, uh, you know, uh, if you will, the uh, authentic um, structure of the party in that state. So I think with that, I think we expect that our All members right. in the state will, 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 you know, follow uh, this position and, um, and leave the controversy behind. So, um, quickly, let's touch on Aqua Bumstead. Your party is at the risk of not having any candidate uh, for the governorship uh, in um, Aqua Bum State, just like we saw in Zamfara State uh, the other time. Um, uh, well, in River State, uh, so apologies for that. It was in River State in 2019 uh, that your party had uh, a disastrous outing and that could not feed the candidate then. So what is happening in Aquabam and how are you hoping to arrest the situation or all hope is lost? No, there, there's no, um, as far as you know, we're concerned, we do not have any uh, problems really um, in Aquabam State. Yes, there's been a lot of uh, discussion about this in, in, in the media, uh, especially as instigated by the resident electoral commissioner, uh, Mr. Mike Guinea, uh, who has simply abandoned his responsibility as an INEC commissioner to become completely partisan. Uh, he's been, he's acted very aberrantly uh, in his uh, expressions and his representations. Now, we are a political party. Our duty is to conduct our primaries and to submit the list of our candidates uh, to INEC. INEC's duty is to receive them and actually do what the law requires it to do, uh, which is to put them forward. Now, look, if anyone has any... Uh, but the question is, yes. if maybe you did not do your primaries according to the rules and guidelines of INEC. Look, because those are some of the, the issues case. that have been raised. Correct. Those are the issues in discussion. 
But that is not the case. We have, you know, followed and complied with all of the requirements that we are obligated to follow and have made those submissions. Now, at this point, anyone who has any uh, misgivings or who disagrees with or has, uh, feels, you know, uh, in any way as short changed by what has done, what has been done, of course, has a right to approach the courts, uh, you know, for redress. Um, but it is, it doesn't, it's not up to an INA commissioner in the state to determine, uh, you know, just by fiat uh, that certain uh, primaries did not comply. That, and by the way, we have not been notified officially by INEC that any of the candidates that we have submitted in Akwai or elsewhere, you know, uh, have fallen short of uh, the, the legal process uh, or right. the guidelines of INEC. We, we haven't received L let's, any let's, uh, let me Let me throw the last question, and we just have about 60 seconds to close, Mr. Moka, if you can help on that. We assume that the name of Mr. Masari, who has been submitted to INEC as a running mate to Mr. Bola Tinobu, the presidential candidate of your party, is assumed that he's a placeholder, is in, uh, is holding it uh, uh, momentarily until your party have a permanent name. That's what we assume because the candidate himself has said that he's still searching for a running mate. Give us an understanding of what is happening as far as the certificate is concerned. Some of your supporters are worried about the issue of certificate of your uh, candidate, the Bolatinobu, the former governor of Lagos State. Are you hoping to resolve that? What is your party telling Nigerians on this matter? Look, our candidate is working very hard uh, to make, you know, that nomination and nominate someone, you know, who brings a lot of integrity and value to the ticket. Now, that's a decision that, you know, can be made lightly. And he's taking his time and, you know, consulting widely to ensure that eventually he makes uh, the right call. Uh, as for other, you know, matters relating to documentation and all of that, that I think is a matter for the candidate to, to deal with uh, with INEC. And I'm not going to, you know, go into that because I'm not uh, able to speak uh, for the candidate uh, on that, you know, uh, very uh, personal documentation matters. But I think that uh, the candidate is, is doing everything to have this nomination uh, closed and closed, you know, properly uh, in the best interest of the party. All right. Thank you so much, Mr. Felix Moka, the national spokesperson of the APC. Thank you so much indeed for clarifying these issues for us. Thank you. Well, that's our show for tonight, everyone. Many thanks for watching. On Sunday, I'll see you again at 8 p.m. I have some guests that will interest you. See you then. Bye-bye.